campus connection. The search is on for the next rising star on campus. We will tell you how you can compete. And speaking of talent, here at Isothermal, you don't have to travel far to enjoy original pieces of art. Throughout the campus, you can find exquisite masterpieces created by the art students. We will tell you where next. Today we'll be talking about Black History Month, an event that will be held here at Isothermal helping honor Black History Month. And Isothermal's own Isothermal's Got Talent. But first, Brittany has a look at what students are talking about around campus. Thanks Dylan, and lots of students were talking about financial aid Pell check distribution. Pell payday was February 19th and lines were short this year. Don't worry if you didn't pick up your check on the 19th, you can pick it up anytime. Just stop by the business office located in the administration building during regular business hours. Recently, Michael Sam, an All-American defensive lineman from Missouri and the Associated Press's SEC Defensive Player of the Year, said that he is gay in an interview with ESPN's Outside the Lines. Since then, the topic of a gay NFL player has made news on every major media outlet. We were curious what Sa some isothermal community college students thought of the controversy. About the first openly gay NFL player to enter the draft. Um, personally, I really don't know what everyone's going up in arms about. Um, I mean, he likes men, he's going into the NFL. Like, I like women. I don't see his sexual preference being an issue, but it might make some people uncomfortable in the locker room. So, so I guess I feel like that's a very brave decision for somebody to make because, I don't know, I guess it's not very, it's not been very acceptable over the years. Really don't have an opinion, though. It's uh, it's whatever he wants to do. If it, um, you know, uh, that's all I gotta say. Well, in my opinion, like it's really no big deal as long as he came out about it. Now, like as an athlete on his team, you would know how to approach him. The Anurin, the college's annual literacy journal, is now accepting entries. The publication is designed as a collection of poems and essays drawing on the talents of isotherm isothermal community college students and the surrounding communities. The photo, essay, poetry, and cover design contest for the 2014 Anurin are now open. The Anurin is Isothermal Community College Student Literacy Magazine. It is published in the spring of each year. Cash prizes are, ava are available for top selections. The deadline for entries is March 3, 2014. For more information, visit isothermal.edu and search Anurin. Have you had the opportunity to stroll down the main halls of the communications building? How about the student center? If you do, you will see various forms of art gracing their walls, including photography, paintings, collages, and examples of graphic art and design. This is a revolving display of creations by students in the advertising, art, and graphic design classes and photography. Participation in the Hall Gallery is designed to give our emerging artists support, experience, and public exposure. If anyone is interested in art or graphic design classes, you should contact instructor Kathy Alexander. For those interested in photography or portfolio class, you can contact instructor Carol Brooks. Some people would say that camping is a seasonal activity, but some people just can't wait that long. I love winter camping. There's a lot bigger views, there's no leaves on the trees, and it's just really a completely different world. Now the positives to doing cold weather camping is you're not going to have to fight uh, for space at a campsite because most people don't cold weather camp. Um, you also don't have to worry about mosquitoes, you don't have to worry about snakes, so you got a lot of advantages of, of doing a cold weather camp. Now some of the disadvantages is it's cold. But if you can handle the cold, it sure can be beautiful. For winter camping, I would recommend higher end equipment so you're not stuck carrying too much weight or freezing in the cold. I went to Puzzle Creek Outdoors in Four City to find out what gear it takes to beat the cold. Biggest thing about gear is um, sleeping. Okay, so you're not around the fire anymore, so now your body has to generate and maintain its own heat. Okay, so we've got here a mummy bag. So 
A mummy bag, the reason they're popular, especially in cold weather, is it's less space to heat up. But a bag is only as good as what's under it. When it's really cold outside, of course, the ground is cold. So you really need a layer between you and the ground. The problem with the bag, if you just have a bag, when you lay on it, it compresses the down or the synthetic fibers. So therefore it loses its thermal properties. So you need to pair it with a ground pad. Having the right gear is important, but wearing the right clothes is crucial. I would recommend buying a light down jacket. Great thing about a down jacket is they'll pack up into nothing. So you can take this jacket, really smash it down. So down makes a great jacket that you can really compress, throw in your pack so when it gets really cold at night, you can pull it out while you're sitting around the campfire. Choose a boot that's gonna have a waterproof membrane. You wanna make sure you keep your feet dry, especially in cold weather. A piece of advice I would give for winter camping is to always bring a few lighters and know how to properly make a fire, even in wet conditions. The other thing too, is if you're using a water filter, and here's the filter cartridge, and it's gonna be below freezing that night, make sure you put the filter in the sleeping bag with you. It's also a good idea if you've got a canteen full of water or something like that, put it in the sleeping bag with you. The reason is if it freezes at night, it potentially will bust um, the filter or your canteen. And also you don't have anything to filter water or drink out of. Now you don't have to wait till spring to enjoy the magic of nature. For more winter camping tips, go to Isothermal TV on YouTube and watch Puzzle Creek owner Jared Roberts full interview. Coming, coming up, we'll be talking to last year's winner of Isothermal's Got Talent. And some traffic changes are coming to Piney Ridge Road. Plus, we'll tell you about an opportunity for free azaleas to beautify your grounds just in time for spring. That's all next. Stay tuned. Isothermal Community College was founded upon a mission. A mission to bring a good and accessible education to those around the Rutherford and Polk County area. Supplying a way for people to go as far as they had ever hoped. And now, Isothermal continues on with that mission stronger than ever before, gladly providing an opportunity to whoever is in need. Isothermal Community College, celebrating 50 years of community. Isothermal Community College is my college. Isothermal Community College is my college. Isothermal Community College is my college. And for 50 years, Isothermal Community College has been your college, guiding students from 16 to 60 in the pursuit of their dreams and helping to create a strong foundation on which success can be built. Isothermal Community College is here to help you to meet the challenge of change. February is Black History Month. Wednesday, February 26 at 11.30 a.m. in the Library Auditorium, we celebrate sharing love with a heart of compassion and service towards others. Anyone may attend. We are honored to have Henry E. Fry as guest speaker, American judge and politician who concluded his public service career as first African-American Chief Justice on the North Carolina Supreme Court. He served as captain of the U.S. Air Force and was inspired to become a lawyer upon returning to North Carolina where he was denied ability to register to vote by so-called literacy test. In 1968, he was the only black North Carolina legislator. In 1983, he was appointed to the North Carolina Supreme Court as an Associate ju Justice, the first African American to hold this position in North Carolina history. For more on Fry's many accomplishments and much more on this celebratory event, please stop by and celebrate this event with us on February 26th. Since 1967, NC Beautif Beautiful has played an important role in environmental education and in supporting organizations in their beautification efforts. Steve Vazendak sat down with Isothermal Community College President Walter Dalton to talk about everything from educational scholarship to the Azalea Celebration. Good day, I'm Walter Dalton, President of Isothermal Community College, and today we have a very special guest a man who is in the Duke University Sports Hall of Fame in 1966. He captained the Duke University basketball team. He was the most valuable player of the Atlantic Coast Conference, most valuable player of the Atlantic Coast Conference tournament that year. He then went on to a pro career in the ABA and was on a championship team 
Following that, he became associate director of athletics at Duke University and is credited with landing Mike Krzyzewski as the coach of the Blue Devils. Today, he is the CEO and director of North Carolina Beautiful, a wonderful organization that has been around about 50 years, and we are happy to have on our campus today Steve Vicendak. Steve, thank you for being here, and we look forward to this conversation. Thank you, Walter. It's a pleasure to be here. Tell us a little bit, if you will, how was North Carolina Beautiful created? Well, it was founded by Governor Moore back in 1967 as the Governor's Advisory, Advisory Council on Beautification and Litter. And um, initially we were involved in actually physically dealing with some of the issues of um, uh, debris in the highways and, and litter. And also we got involved with uh, putting wildflowers in the center of our highway system or along our highway system. And also we started Adopt the Highway program here in North Carolina. I think you raised money for some scholarships for environmental uh, studies, is that right? Yes, one of our major programs is Windows of Opportunity Grants, and that's a merit-based grant that we give to teachers, kindergarten to the 12th grade, public or private schools, to put environmental projects on in their classroom. And I think you told me, too, that churches and schools can apply for your Azalea, Azalea grants. If you can uh, tell us a little bit about that program. Sure. In the fall, in uh, October, we give away 5,000 Azaleas in conjunction with uh, WRAL. And they're available to any nonprofit, a church or a school or a public area to just beautify their grounds. And uh, the only qualification is a merit-based application. And you have to go to Raleigh to pick them up and bring them back. Well, we've talked maybe our college can go pick up some if grants are awarded this way and we want to see uh, entities here, schools and churches around this area apply for those grants. How would they do that if they're interested? Well, they just go to our website, ncbeautiful.org, and click on the space that says Azalea Celebration, and then all the information they need to apply for the grants is there. And it would be a wonderful community service project if the, the college could be a pickup point to save them the, t the time and the expense of driving all the way to Raleigh. They could come here and pick up the plants here. Well, our college is all about community service, and we will a a absolutely explore that possibility. We think it's wonderful. Auditions are around the corner once again for Isothermal's Got Talent. Recently, Michael and Ryan caught up with last year's winner, David Wellman, to talk about his big win. I, it, was, uh, it, was, it was great. Uh, I, had, I really enjoyed it. Uh, being around a lot of uh, good good people, you know, um, and uh, I I hope to do it again this year too. Well, I, I had a lot of influence growing up uh, between you know country, rock, blues, uh, Ray Charles, you know, the, uh, the Temptations, you know, plays like that, uh, soulful type music. Uh, that I hope that I can uh, be able to do it for years to come. The back entrance to the college off of Piney Ridge Road, you may have noticed a few changes. At the beginning of the semester, the speed limit on Piney Ridge Road has, had been lowered to 35 miles per hour. And now, soon, there will be a new stoplight at the corner of Piney Ridge Road and Oak Street. The construction has been completed on the new light and will be in operation in a few weeks. So be safe out there. I think that pretty much wraps things up for today, Dylan, don't you think? Yes, it sure does, and we hope you all have a wonderful day. And with all weekend quickly approaching, a wonderful weekend as well. Once again, I'm Brittany Robinson. And I'm Dylan Huffman, and be sure to join us here again next time for another new and exciting edition here on Campus Connection. Have a good day, everyone. See you next time.